so tap you know tapping these are five millimeter 800 and you can see I got my little thing here with a tap in it and this is a spring center so just before it comes out it hits a spring center lift it up right now I got a reposition over here which according to my numbers is going to be zero two tenths off but who's counting right so then you take the tap put it on the tap on the spring center lift it up and see now it's in the hole give it a good little pressure a little tap magic this is a starting tap I guess what they call it a plug tap I think it's the it's not the real long taper on the tip so I'm only going in 10 millimeters and it don't take long at 10 millimeters to feel the tap bottom out and I screw it up get it out and then I take my blow gun I'm going to clear the chips out of that little hole, off of the tap, I'm going to take this tap out, just so you can see it, that's a 5 millimeter tap, Hanson. And I change it for this guy. That's a bottle, a five millimeter bottoming tap. You can tell because the end has got almost no taper. So put that in a little chingadera T handle. Lift it up, set it in. Sauce for the goose. Make sure you find the hole, find the threads with that tap, because it'll if you if you're not paying attention, you'll grab halfway in and cross thread another set of threads. Okay, so I just hit the bottom, kind of where it's not cut yet. And listen to my mill squeak while I wiggle it. Okay, there's the bottom. Now when I do these tiny little holes like a four millimeter, five millimeter, six, I typically don't chamfer them because they're so tiny. I chamfer them after I'm done. I'll go in there with a chamfer tool and put a nice little insert. There. So that's it. Holes, tap, threads made.
everybody. Here we go again. So I'm back on this uh, plastic shredder. This is the arbor I made. <laughs> arbor, that's where I'm turning the shaft. These little discs will ultimately be cutting teeth and it has to fit in a guard right like that. So that the teeth will come up from the bottom with the inside here. And see, I can get it kind of in there, but I have to cut the shaft off to go any farther. And basically, just in case anybody gives a bang or, you know, wonders how to do it, you know, how to set it up. I just clamped this pipe. Both of these, I set them up in the mill. And I started with the first groove, offset at 10 millimeters. And it's a, it's a five millimeter end mill, carbide end mill. So drill a groove, offset 10 millimeter, drill a groove, all the way down. I did the same thing with this piece of uh, pipe. Now this is not regular pipe, it's carbon steel pipe that, that you can harden. But again, I just put a five millimeter groove, offset 10 millimeters, all the way down with a mill. So as anybody that knows machines and machining knows, you can't put a five millimeter wide part in a five millimeter groove. It has to be bigger than five millimeter, just a little bit. So that step involved one of my really good Simmons files that's like four millimeters wide. And I just spent about half an hour dressing these things. Going right down the line, take a stroke. Maybe taking a tenth of a thousandth each stroke, maybe less. Anyway, I worked it all the way down and I would mark with a Sharpie where they were tight and then work on that one edge. Since my early career in fabricating replacement parts involved making a lot of stuff by hand because the place I worked had no machines, didn't want to have to afford them. Um, they didn't really do machine work. It was more like a salvage yard where they wanted to fabricate various pieces of equipment and so the kid on the ground had to make the brackets and stuff. So I got this thing all ready. It sits in. It, it runs into the edges so far, so I got some more. And I can actually see it now. Yeah. So I just keep doing that until I get it to fit perfectly, and then I'll make a sanding strip on a bar that can go down there and kind of like fresh out the inside and get the rest of the chips out. Then I'm going to cut this guy off. And it'll be part of a of the adjustment for how big the chips it'll cut. It'll be on like an offset where it can swing up or swing down and actually cover the teeth or open them up. So yeah, stay tuned. Okay, so this is a quick little one on this. This is the guard to that the teeth will come through that'll be adjustable to change the width of the cut and what I needed I was looking for pieces of metal to make some big washers to make the sides of this guy that'll be down inside there that they're gonna end up being welded on this and I need one on each end like this and then there's another one will be right in the middle and a lot of this will be cut off but the funny thing about this is I always like to 
recycle stuff or repurpose things. Anything that's got a use, you don't even know when you get it what it might be good for. So this is a classic example. See this guy? It's kind of gray, it's a piece of steel. It's actually a little curve to it. It's got a little spherical shape. I got three of them on the table. I got a stack of probably 20 or 30 of them out in my metal pile. And what these are is I, I worked in fleet services, trucks, trucks and equipment and fleet, the Border Patrol. And we put special kinds of lights on the front of them called cutting lights. They're like little fog lamps. And every one of these, say these two, came out of the front bumper of one F-150 pickup truck. Because when we would prep them for field service, we'd go and measure out, drill a hole, take a plasma cutter with a circle attachment, and punch out two holes in the bumpers. Now, I had collected, you know, these were, you, you collect it all up and throw it away, you know. And I had permission from the soup to take a bunch of these because I used to make targets out of them all the time. I go out shooting my AR and it, these make great targets because you shoot, shoot them all up and then toss them. Any event, now I'm going to put these in the lathe and make the, the sides of this guy and a bracket, the adjustment link that will be hooked to the bottom of it. Cool. Okay. I want to demonstrate how I'm going to make this prototype have an adjustable depth of cut. So I showed you this. This is the guard. Obviously, there's a whole bunch more machining on the back. That's going to occur later. But this is the business side that interlocks with these teeth. Again, if, you, if you're just getting here, these are all each going to have four teeth around them staggered. But that gets done when I'm finished. It's the last machining operation. So, and this goes down there. To keep the stuff that you're cutting from falling in between there. And also, over here, it's got about six millimeters. Uh, you know, reliably five, four, four point eight to five depth. So if something goes in here between the teeth, it's not going to go any farther than five millimeters. When the teeth comes around, it'll cut it. So the question is, how do I make this articulate at the same time that there's a spinning shaft in the middle with very sharp, hardened teeth on it? So here's the thing. I'm going to eyeball this. See, I'm going to bring it down a hair. Okay. So... Right now, this guy is centered where this can turn without bothering anything. But obviously the teeth would be down inside. Well, if you look right down here where this edge of the open slots, there's a, a black Sharpie mark right there. And then if I turn it around, that black it mark lines up right there. This opening is this big. So if I take a pin and put it right here and drill a hole here and drill a hole on the other plate down there where they are in exactly the same spot so I can slide a pin down through there and then I have a seamless tube welded on this edge 
that the pin fits very precisely down through the middle of, I can make this guy pivot on this pin and by turning it, let's see, it's hard to do in your hand. I can actually rotate it to about there. And when I'm there, these openings line up from straight across. But right there, there's a big gap. So imagine it's pivots here, and I have bracket on the other side that can move it back and forth. And I want to adjust the depth of cut. All I've got to do is rotate. You got to get the load up because it's loose. Just rotate this guy out to whatever depth I want. Could be two millimeters, three millimeters, four millimeters, just like that. So, when you want to make a fairly precise part by welding together multiple parts, it's important to make sure that you've fixture it really good before you start tacking it and let it cool off once you do so this particular part I'm going to tack this tube into these two end plates because this piece in the middle I still want to take it in and out until I'm done but I want to get these guys referenced and that's what this is all about tacking it's a tacky job but someone's got to do it 